Some people don't like to hear prayer. Because what? Prayer is work. Prayer is not of the flesh. Prayer is of the spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that gives you the ability, the sufficiency to be able to pray. So if you pray in your flesh, you're going to get tired. But when you are helped by the Holy Spirit, you're going to glide by the Spirit of God in prayer. When you begin to exercise yourself in prayer, when you begin to exercise your spirit in prayer, God responds. He responds to your prayer. And the response comes as feedbacks. Praise God. So the first one is instructions to be obeyed. When God spoke to me about Deborah Intercessory Ministry, it's a prayer network. And he said, I need you to begin to um, gather the women in secession and teach them how to pray. Why? Because he said there's a revival indeed coming and the women are going to be in the forefront. In intercession. In intercession. Why? <laughs> Don't be in a hurry. <laughs> The work, there's work. And that work is the work of intercession. In the forefront, in intercession. That was what happened to Deborah. It was. Because if you, if you hear at the end what, they, what, what she was saying, see, the, 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 the what, the, the, was it the wind, the, the sea, they all walked. Praise the Lord. She was able to use them all to do this battle. It was in the place of prayer. It's powerful. It's potent. The womb of a woman, as I said earlier in our first meeting for the women, the womb of a woman is a gateway from eternity to time. She births destinies from to time. Anna's womb was one like that. We're talking about Samuel. Her womb was like, oh, nothing was going to come. I believe God was preserving her womb for such a time as when there would be no prophet. And probably they needed a womb that had been fallow for a period of years for that seed to come forth. There are things that have been written in the spirit. If you don't know, you don't know. And you will walk like someone who is blind. You will walk like someone who is regretting many things because you don't understand what God is doing. There are some women here who some are sent into Mar some marriages and they wonder what kind of husband is this at the end of the day look at this they don't know that there's a mantle probably that was to move from probably the 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 grandfather to the son who is probably your husband now and who is misbehaving and there's a firstborn son who you have given birth to and that you are in that home to to collect that mantle, to move it to that son. And while you are staying in that place is to wait in prayer. To make sure that that mantle is moved to the next generation. Yes, the man might not love you anymore. He might not even want to see your face. But you are staying there because of that mantle. It must be moved. And you are that gateway. You might not know that you are in a marriage because of the revival. It might, maybe it might not even be sweet. Maybe it might not be. Maybe it might be. Praise the Lord. But you need to know what the Holy Spirit is doing. What God is doing in this present time. You need to know. Don't just say, oh God, why me? Why me? Go to the place of prayer. Lord, there must be something I need to understand. So that I can align myself to what you are doing. So that if it is to stay here, I stay here. Like, um, like, like, like Esther will say, if I perish perish hallelujah there's some other people there are some other women who are moved into a particular family are married into a particular family because you are the intercessor of that family you are married into a family probably nobody likes you in that family because there's something in that foundation that is fighting you but you are there to cut off to uproot to pull down the second is um, the second feedback lines is education while you pray and you're prosecuting prayers, you are praying, you are praying, exercising your spirit. Yes, you begin to receive instructions from God. You write it down. Don't only write, don't let your diaries be filled with writings without doings. 
Yes, because it's not about the writing the instructions, but doing the instructions. Praise God. So the second is education. You may, because you actually might be ignorant of a principle or the principles that you need to apply in certain situations. That's why those things persist and you're not seeing results. You might be ignorant about it. So you need that education. You need to be learned. It's the Holy Spirit that will begin to educate you on a matter. As you pray, he will educate you. So there's something called spiritual education, spiritual knowledge, spiritual revelation is from the Lord. The Holy Spirit will highlight some things that probably is wrong in your life. That's why some things are going on. Probably um, this man has come. He left. You were supposed to get married. Something happened. He left. Another one came. You did something. He left. You begin to pray, Lord, why is this happening to me? Lord, show me what's wrong, what's wrong, what's wrong. Oh, Father, oh, Father. And you're praying. And then he tells you, see, that character, that thing, you need to let it go. So this is the reason why. So he will educate you on what to do so that you can receive, um, you can bring forth that seed. When you have received a spiritual education, true spiritual knowledge, then you begin to operate that way in every other area of your life, your financial, your marital, and all that. It will be easier for you. Praise the Lord. Am I making prayer more interesting? Oh, yes. That's what you need. So that is it. It begins, um, then the next begins to highlight areas that you are totally ignorant about. And he begins to correct you on some things that you have been doing wrongly. There was a time my husband was correcting me on a particular thing. And I was like, but the thing looked so irrelevant. And he kept saying it. And I was just, I will argue and say, no, ah, but this thing doesn't look, it doesn't look. Until one day, he told me. One day he said, um, okay, do it the way you want. Then one day he said, you've been doing this thing for six years. I said, what? I said, we are counting the years. He said, yes, you've been doing the same things for six years. So it brought my attention. And then I went to pray about it. And the Holy Spirit said, yes, you need to respond. You need to look inward. You need to deal with this thing. Probably that is what is hindering, you know, your progress in some areas of your life. And then when I accepted it, and I, I, I now said, okay, in fact, this thing, I never. And then some of these things, the Holy Spirit, you need to be conscious. I was still doing those things because I wasn't conscious of it. So it now came to my attention. Like, you need to be conscious to stop. If your husband has told you this thing, stop. Don't let it come to a point when he's okay, do as you please. Oh, then you are going off. Because it's like saying... Whatever you see, eh, take it. When somebody tells you that, I just withdraw. And I learned that lesson. And I saw that it applies to every other area of my life. When the change happened, I started seeing results. Praise the Lord. And so the third, the third feedback is spiritual empowerment. Spiritual empowerment. The third feedback line. So he begins to empower you to fulfill your purpose as you pray. You have heard his instructions, right? He has educated you. Then he begins to empower you because of that seed planted inside of you. You need empowerment to break forth that seed. You need empowerment. My husband will tell you, go to a meeting. He said, don't go empty. Don't go and speak English from beginning to the end. There must be hallelujah. And so, I remember the first meeting I went. I said, God, you need to help me, oh. You need to help me, oh. Because as I was leaving home, my husband had told me, Dina, don't come back without <laughs> results. I was under pressure. <laughs> I said, Holy Ghost, I need to find you wherever you are in this meeting. <laughs> Comfort wherever you are. I had prayed, 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 prayed. I didn't see a sign. I didn't see a vision. I didn't see anything. I said, God, am I going to go back and tell him there was nothing? I saw the first night I came up, I opened my Bible and I began to, I, I, I had barely said two lines. Then there was this protocol who was standing by my side. I wasn't so comfortable because, you know, please, we to, then we didn't have people standing beside. So he was just standing there. And I just said, 
I was praying. I can't remember what I said. And this guy just fell like a log. Boof. I was like almost distracted in my mind. People were already praying. I raised the prayer point. In my mind, I was like, I hope this guy is okay. I hope nothing happened to him. Because he didn't move. And he fell. He just fell in at his front. Boof, like that. I said, God, I hope this guy is not dead. Or what happened to this guy? Well, I was praying. I was praying, Lord, help, 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 help. Then two people came and dragged him to the back. That guy did not recover until after the meeting. I didn't understand what happened. And then great things also happened in that meeting. The, the spirit of prayer and everything. And when I, when I finished the meeting, God told me, said, God said, said, that was my power. I said, oh, really? So when I went back home, my husband asked, said, was there power? I said, Jesus. <laughs> I, said, I said, Jesus did it. Hallelujah. <laughs> You know, he said, no, the kingdom of God is not in words. It's in power. Yes. It's authority. Hallelujah. Well, I thank God because God has given every one of us here his power. It is open to everyone who bears his name. He said, it's you who will do it. It's not him that will come and, No, he has given you the power and the authority right here. Check out that Satan. Check out that demon from your home. Check him out. Don't let him stay. Check him out. Check him out. Check him out. He has stayed too long. Too long too long in your ancestral line. Oh, you want to continue with me too? It's time to get out. Oh, yes. Empowerment. A feedback of empowerment is a spiritual capital to prosecute destiny, to prosecute the seed that has been planted inside of you. There is also a representative of feedback. D, the, the fourth one. And at this point, he wants what? He wants you to represent him. Praise the Lord. And this representation is holy. W-H-O-L-Y. He wants you to represent him holy in every area of your life. He will make you an ambassador to your marketplace, an ambassador to your, to, to, to your school, an ambassador of his kingdom to your workplace, an ambassador of his kingdom to wherever where he feels, even where he feels they resist the gospel, we still send you there. Praise the Lord. And for you to be his representative, oh, it's character based. Because for you to represent him, you must have his character. And that's why a lot of Christians are dabbling with, that are struggling with, that character. Character, good character, the character of the Lord is very important. It's him, as he's teaching you, he will tell you, see this your character has issues. You have issues. You have issues. You're too proud. He will tell you you're too proud. He will tell you you talk too much. Just keep quiet. There were times when my husband would say something and I want to respond. He would say, keep quiet. Now hold myself. Some other time I say, no, no, no. I, I have to talk this talk. I have to. If, if I don't talk it, if I don't say it, how will you understand what I'm saying? Say nothing. Say nothing. No, just say nothing. He will start saying something, saying something. So I'm like, you can't hear what he's saying now. Should I not explain myself to so keep quiet? And I'll keep quiet. The days that I don't keep quiet, oh my God. I will put myself in a kind of trouble I don't even understand how it even got there. Yes. Because I will say things I'm not supposed to say. And then the other person will not understand it. Because God is not there. He told you to keep quiet because you didn't see Satan standing by. To change what you are saying. To change your understanding. That what you said that person didn't hear is what Satan told the person. So he's telling you keep quiet. Even some people talk. God tell me keep quiet. When I'm insisting, insisting that I need to make it. To make them to understand. Then if I say. Then Satan turns it around. I'm like ah. Well this was not what I said. It, it will even be hard for you to draw, draw yourself out of the problem. So God knows. Say keep quiet. You talk too much. You tell that envy in your heart, that bitterness, work on it. That anger, hey, because anger has a way of destroying the seed of God inside of you. You will use your own very hand to destroy what you have received. Satan is very good at it. Like uh, she are praying and look for a way to come in. There's an appetite. It's appetite of sleep. That's what I'm going to use. You say, wake up and pray. It's a problem. Five minutes you started. Kaba baba. E kaba. E. Mm. Six a.m. Ring your alarm clock. Like, eh? Six o'clock. You go and change. You need to bath. You want to go to work. 
and it happens over and over again. Do this, do this. Stop this. Stop sleeping. Stop eating too much. He often tell you, say six o'clock, end your eating. He has the right to give you that, that instruction for a reason. Sometimes he wants you to be light because he has seen that your ancestors fell because of food. Hey, yes. Your ancestors fell because of food. So, your own, stop your eating from six. You won't know what you are fighting until God opens your eyes. And then you just say, it's because of a morsel of bread. The whole thing was lost. Someone in the Bible, it happened to him. A morsel. Small. Praise God. How are you representing him wherever you are? It's your character that speaks to unbelievers. If you don't have a good character, they will put, put it to your face that ah, you say you are serving God. But see your character. Lack integrity. You see the way you talk. You insult people. You don't give a damn about anything. You have to give a damn. Because you are representing a kingdom. For him to make you that ambassador to represent him anywhere, you need to deal with character. You need to deal, allow him to take you through the process. Sometimes he will take you to that process just to keep your mouth shut. Sometimes he will give you battles, open battles. You won't even have the mouth to even insult anybody again. Because you have used it eh, to battle in the spirit, tire, tire, tire. The next time something comes along, you can't talk. And then they'll be wondering, even Satan come like, ha, you that, you will do, do, do. And, so, and sometimes Satan is just looking for one word, one word from your mouth, just one word, so you use it against you. Red, uh, character, character. You can lose out on your destiny because you have wrong character. Because you refuse instructions. You refuse to learn his educations. The instructions, the education is given, you refuse to learn it. Some he has shown you in dreams. He refused to follow. He has answered you many times. You still say, no, it's my way. He has shown you this demand. You say, no, it's not like me that time. I say, no, it's not. This one is not God. This one is, 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 is not God. This one is my mind. But other things I'll say is God. When he came to marriage, I said, this one is my mind now. It's my mind. My mind. Keep quiet. But not knowing that I was trying to shut down what God was bringing if you're praying consistently, there's going to be feedback. You need to know there's going to be feedback. You know you can't pray. Join someone who can pray. Have a prayer partner. Join meetings of prayer. Gradually, you will be imparted with the spirit of prayer. A time will come when you don't need the group to be able to press. The body will just come and you see yourself praying and praying and praying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 